Hello and welcome to Underpaid Gamers. My name is Justin. I'm here with my friend and colleague Tony. Hey! Today we will be talking about many things. Uh, in addition to our experiences with esports this week, we're also going to be talking about Uncharted 4, Watch Dogs 2, and... Platinum Trophies. Fire Emblem Direct. Fire Emblem Direct. So stay and tuned. Netflix. And movies. All those things. Let's go! Underpaid Gamers is official podcast of UnderpaidGamers.com. We are on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play Music, Stitcher, and other podcast services around the globe. Yep. We're on YouTube. Yep. Twitter at UP Gamers Podcast. Mm-hmm. You can email us at underpaidgamerspodcast at gmail.com. Correct. And we're on Instagram. True. We also... I was going to say we also have a website, and then I was just going to do it all over again on accident. Oh, man. You almost cycled through your... Loop. You might have looped it right there. That would have been, been rough. A little bit, a little rough. All right, today we have news, as per usual. Then we have topics. We do. About three of them. Okay. Our main topics are going to be Uncharted 4, Watch Dogs 2, I got Platinum on, and the Fire Emblem announcement. Sure. And the news is a little surprise for you little little listeners over there. Oh, a little featured little birds. What a little surprise. I have no idea what you're doing right now. (laughs) I don't know what you're referencing either. Anyway. You want, to, you want to give it a start? You want to start with Zelda Breath of the Wild? Because I want to start with Zelda Breath of the sure, Wild. Sure, let's do that. So, I, the complete official guide was listed on Amazon, and it gives some details as to what is going to go down in Zelda Breath of the Wild. If you don't want to be spoiled at all, don't listen to this. Don't do it. I'm not going to be spoiling any, any story details. They're actually very minor spoilers. But the uh, description on Amazon for Breath of the Wild says... It's an at-a-glance walk through its annotated maps and screenshots show you the way through every quest and dungeon. So, it's utterly comprehensive. 120 shrine mini-dungeons, 900 Korok seed puzzles, 76 side quests all mapped out and ready for you to discover. Blah, 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 blah. So that sounds like a lot. That is quite a bit of 120 content. shrine mini-dungeons, 900 seed puzzles, and 76 side quests. Sounds like a lot. That sounds like a lot. That sounds like a very large game. Mm-hmm. And it probably is. Zelda Breath of the Wild is a very exciting game. It's yeah. one of the games coming to the Switch that I'm excited for. It's, it's also one of the only games coming to the Switch that hasn't been released prior. That's true. It's only, probably the only game that's coming out this year that actually makes me want to get a Switch. Mario Odyssey? Super Mario Odyssey? I'm not huge into Mario games. Neither am I, but it looked cool. Except for everything that wasn't the city See, part. See, that, that's one of the things... I would probably buy the game if I had a Switch. I would not buy a Switch for to that get game. that game. I get you. You don't have to buy a Switch for Legend of Zelda. You can play it on the Wii U. True. Which I don't own one, but my roommate does. Yeah, that's right. Um, anyway, I'm not a big Zelda fan, as in I've never really played the games. Mm-hmm. You've played, I've played a good amount of them. I've played most of them. So, I, I've only had one long enough to beat one of them. Wind Waker. Yeah. Oh, and Game Boy ones. Oh. We had this Age of... Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons. And I'm going to defer to your infinite knowledge about the Zelda games. Compared to yours, you yes, it is infinite. And <laughs> Breath of the Wild is a large, open-world RPG. Sure, sure. But Zelda games, mm-hmm. there doesn't seem to be a lot of like upgrades to them. There's not a lot of mm-hmm. uh, character development in a standard RPG fashion, where okay. the character gets stronger, levels up. Maybe learns different moves. But mm-hmm. Levels up at all. Zelda doesn't level up ever, right? Right. He doesn't learn, or he, Link just learns new, like, oh, I have a bomb now I can use. Oh, I have sure. a boomerang. So you I unlock can... new uh, equipment. You unlock, or you find shrines that give you more health, or okay. heart, heart pieces. Uh, not shrines, heart pieces. Uh, and so you level up by getting more health and by getting new... Um, accessories that allow you to access new areas and new dungeons okay. uh, and fight in different ways. Okay. So there is no actual leveling up system. You're correct. So and also, the stories are almost all... I mean, it's you know the roles of each of the players. Now, how that role is how it is. Like, Twilight Princess felt a lot different than Ocarina of Time. Yeah. Um, and each game kind of approaches those roles in a different... Like, the settings always feel different. However, the roles are always the same. The basic story is always the same. Okay. If that makes sense. So what do you think about all these side quests and all mm-hmm. these things? Because when I picture it as a Zelda know-nothing, sure. I picture it as just kind of like walking up to somebody and they're like, hey, I have a side quest for you. Sure. And it's like 
I, I don't feel like you can approach the side quest very differently. It's either going to be a puzzle, or it's going to be go here and defeat these guys. It's not like, uh, if we're going to compare it to Skyrim, another open world game that's also coming to the Switch. Mm -hmm. It's not like, I'm going to have a different build for my character as I did, different from what I did last time. Yeah. It feels like every time you play Zelda, it's going to be exactly the same. So how much replayability is there to a game like this, do you think, before the game has been released? Mm, that's a tall order to make a judgment on that, but uh, I'm Given not your sure. infinite Zelda knowledge. Well, you know, side quests in, other, in a lot of Zelda games aren't necessarily, you go talk to a person, he says, go kill 10 of these things. Most A lot of side quests are, you, you're exploring and you find a cave, or you, do, you, do, you may talk to somebody, but they don't like specifically say, go kill these things. They'll be like, oh, man, have you ever heard about the legend of the sword of the blah, 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 and it's in this blah, in the blah, blah, blah? No one's ever found it before. And then that tells you, oh, there's probably a cave somewhere that i got to go explore and find this, this sword. Okay. Um, so I, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, I don't know exactly, exactly how it's going to look like. Uh, traditionally, I almost think Zelda isn't an RPG, more of an action game, mm -hmm. more of an action adventure game but at the same time there are some rpg elements to it so i don't know it's one of those games that's hard to classify uh because it's it's different and replayability i don't think it's it's going to have a problem with replayability I've, I've yet to play a zelda game that hasn't had its hardcore zelda fans want to replay it over and over and over again like this is because of gameplay because of the gameplay people like the gameplay they like the puzzles they like exploring finding all the stuff you know i uh, my favorite zelda game is wind waker and i've wanted to go back and play the game for years mm -hmm. i want to go do it right now actually that sounds good good because i love that game so much it was so much fun uh so i don't know you know i think it's too early to make a judgment i guess my guess would be based on i guess i guess my guess will be uh based on previous content i don't think that it's going to struggle with replayability uh, though I could be wrong, I don't know. I don't think we have enough to go off for that yet. But that'd be my guess is that we wouldn't have a problem. Interesting. That'd be my guess. Exciting. It sounds very large. It does sound very large. I'm excited for the largeness of it. Mm -hmm. It's huge. Gosh. It's a bigly place. Someone posted, like, this is the Breath of the Wild map compared to Skyrim. And it's so much bigger. I mean, it's not so much bigger, but I'm like... What are the, what's the scale on this? And also, right. And also, what's in this world? And why are you comparing this to Skyrim, a game that's been out... Since 2011? Yes, for years, and years and years and years. But also, it's like, what's in this world? Like, what are... I mean, it just said that there's all these different side quests yeah. and things, but like, I mean, there's Skyrim, gonna be, you're just walking around, oh, there's sure. a dragon. Sure. No, there's going to be like different zones. So, uh, probably. probably. Different, different realms that you go to. <laughs> within the large map, right? Mm -hmm. So there's always the mountain people, and there's always, like, some water plays. Is there fast travel? Uh, there wasn't in the old games. Uh oh Can you imagine a, a game as big as Skyrim with no fast travel? That would suck. That would suck. Fast travel. Mm-hmm. It's nice. Two movies. Okay, one movie, one Game, not game. Okay. TV show on sure. Netflix. Sure. House of Cards. Mm -hmm. We've watched it. Mm -hmm. I watched it while I played my Game Boy. You watched it without anything. I did. I do not have the same affinity for it as you do. I watched it straight. On the rocks. On the rocks. Neat. Anyway. Yeah. Release date for the new season. Yeah. It May thirtieth. <sighs> yep. That'll we make the terror. That's right. right. Mm. We are the terror. I think is what the, I don't mm. know. Well, something like that. So that's exciting. Yeah. House of Cards is fun. I like House of Cards. I'm excited. Each season has felt very different from, from the next. I guess so. In my in, in my opinion. I mean, the first season was so different from the second. And then the second to the third. Maybe I should go back and watch it. How many episodes was very different season? too. Ten? I roughly, think ten. Roughly. I think it may have been That's 12. like the best binge watching. I know. Especially if you haven't watched the seasons and then they... Like if you're behind. Yeah, and you've got to catch up. Not so much you've got to catch up, but you want to catch up. Like, like Game of Thrones? So like... The Walking Dead. Sure. There's 24 episodes in a season. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to watch 24 hours. 72 episodes right. because I'm three years behind. Right. That's but right. if there's 30 episodes, then heck yeah. There you I go. Spend 30 hours on that. It's, real, it's a digestible amount. Yes. For sure. And enough, a lot can happen in 10 hours. Mm hmm. For sure. Also, Logan trailer. Yeah, we watched Number that. two, we, we did. watched. And your thoughts? 
that this is The Last of Us X-Men edition. Yes, I agree. Uh, 100%. The first trailer did not give me that vibe. No, not at all. I thought it was post-apocalyptic X-Men. Logan is still alive. Yeah. And, and uh, Professor X is on his deathbed. Yeah. And that and is... The girl X-23. Yeah. Was made with Logan's DNA. Okay. That's why she has the claws and stuff That like makes that. sense now. I mean, kind of. Um, but you were like, whoa, she has claws! I'm like... You already knew. I didn't. I didn't know that. I didn't connect the Anyway, else. it's weird to see the relationship so similar again to Joel and Ellie with mm-hmm. X with Logan and X twenty three, the girl. I don't sure. know what her name is, but I'm like, do you have to do that? Because if they would have made it like a quest to find her, that would be completely different from the Last of Us. But this is like this is a she's living with you. You're trying to teach her what family is. Yeah, like, blah, blah 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 blah. You know, I mean, Last of Us. It wasn't teaching her what family is. It's more like she's teaching Joel what family is. Yeah. But but again, it's it's just this father daughter kind of show movie that that's gonna t- probably stretch the heartstrings in terms of like what what relationships look like yeah, the, yeah. the father daughter relationship. And we know from the trailer that Logan doesn't want to be the father, or doesn't want her to see him as that, because because he says to her, you know, you know, I know what you're thinking, and I'm not that. I think is what he said in the trailer. And he was referencing, like... I don't remember that, but I believe you. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it sounded like he was referencing, you think that I'm your dad, but I'm not. Yeah. Um, which is, sounds very much like Joel at the beginning of the game. Yes. So, I, I just see a lot of... In terms of the story, there's that... I mean, X-Men is going to have tons of, like, fun combat. Because that's what X-Men does, right? Sometimes. See, it's rated R, and I tweeted about this. Mm-hmm. I don't want it to be rated R just because they have the minimum required F-words... And, like, the minimum required blood and gore. I want it to be rated R for, like, a good reason. For, like, grit? I don't want it... Yeah, I don't want it to be, like, a PG-13 with one extra F word. Oh, it's rated R. I want it to be, like, rated R because there's, like, intense scenes because they're, they're dealing with issues that you can't do PG-13. Sure. Uh, I get that. I mean, the X-Men movies aren't even that, like, good with, like, CGI all the time. Mm-hmm. So when they oh, do... Oh, they struggle sometimes. Yeah, so when you do, like, the blood and gore and stuff, and it's just, like... And now you have the little girl, like, jumping around, like, cutting people. I'm like, I don't, I don't care that much. Wolverine, there's only so many things you can do with him in a combat, and they've already done most of them. They've done all of them. He always does the thing where he dives he on somebody. jumps and puts the claws first and yeah. dives into somebody's, like, Every torso. Like, yeah. I got it, dude. Now, if he rips somebody in half, okay. That's a new one. Yeah. That'll be fun. That's just because they've not been that gory. If he cuts somebody's arm off and then uses it as a baseball bat and knocks somebody's head off. That'd be sick. I'm down. I'm down with that. <laughs> give me some. That might be a little too far. Give me some actual like things we haven't seen before. Sure. Like I'm just afraid it's gonna be rated R because Deadpool is rated R and they got so much money, and this one has a couple extra f words. We'll we'll find out. You know. I'm not uh, excited for it. I know you're not. I don't like X Men movies that much in general, and I, I don't like how many single Wolverine movies have there been that have been good. Sure. I I like the new trilogy of X Men movies. So like with the new professor, uh, James with the young guy, which I like. I I mean honestly, I mean I like Patrick Stewart a lot. I like him of as Professor X. A nerd. Lot. I'm a huge nerd. Uh, but in terms of like X X one X two X three, um, versus first class, um, what's the second one? Uh, Days of Future Past. Days of Future and Past and then Apocalypse. Apocalypse. I I mean I like the new trilogy a lot. I would say probably more than the original trilogy. That's fair. Of X Men movies, um, so well, first class is better than first class. It's is probably the good. best X Men movie. I don't know. I like Days of Future Past. That was also very good. A lot. I don't. I think I might like Days of Future Past better than I like First Class. Except, see, I'm, I have a Wolverine fatigue. He's in literally everything. Well, and he's had he had two independent movies for mm-hmm. himself, right? He had like X Men Origins Wolverine, and then which had terrible CG. Another one. And then they had the Wolverine movie w- in Japan. Yep. And, and now there's Days of Future Past was almost a right Wolverine solo film. Sure. So he's he's always like a main character in all of them except for X Men Apocalypse mm-hmm. and First Class. I think First Class he makes an appearance for like a second. Yeah, and I'm like, and oh, that's a good cameo. Yeah, that's, that's, and that's, that's fine. That's as much as I need. Right, and that's fine to have those cameos because he's you know a pretty old dude. By the time we see him, I, don't know. But I mean Hugh Jackman's still jacked, man. He is. Get it? Mm-hmm. Hugh still jacked, jacked, man. There was a. Uh, uh, what am I trying to say? Rumors mm-hmm. and speculation that Deadpool was going to be in this a little bit, and they said some people said that they saw Ryan Reynolds on set. Um, I don't know. I doubt he'll be a cameo. I doubt it'll probably be like a 
end, end credit end scene, credit scene mm. where he comes in and does something. That could be funny. Yeah. But see, like, this film isn't a funny film. It's not giving it off that vibe be, like right? Deadpool would be. So mm-hmm. I don't know if Deadpool would fit in this. It uh, it wouldn't. I think the only appropriate use of Deadpool in this would be an end credit scene. Some sort of something he'll break the fourth wall in and be like, "So you like that movie?" It was a little. I mean, he'll make some like snarky comment about it and then be like, "Whatever." Maybe. I don't know. Or if Wolverine dies at the end of this, yeah. Deadpool comes back and he's like wearing the side bolt, sideburns outside of his mask. Yeah, yeah. And he has like the claws <laughs> on or whatever. And he's like holding Wolverine's hands yeah. with the claws out. <laughs> oh man. Yep. 